I think what we're exploring here is a new medium for this kind of storytelling. And I wonder 50 years down the road if the raw material is gonna exist for people to do that. My faculty lecture is about a multimedia documentary that I've been working on for the past two years uh, that's based on a book that was written by my spouse, uh, Karen Berkey Huntsberger. The title of the book is Waiting for Peace, the uh, journals and correspondence of a World War II medic. That World War II medic was my father-in-law, Richard Berkey. Richard Berkey was a 19-year-old pre-med student at Indiana University. So Richard was drafted into the war, uh, uh, went through basic training. Because he was a pre-med student, was uh, selected for medical training. The unit he was with uh, came under attack in a village, Ober Otterbach, Germany. Uh, he was wounded in the upper arm uh, by a piece of shrapnel about 8.30 in the morning. He stayed on the battlefield all day until mid-afternoon. Uh, tending to sick and dying, or wounded and dying men. Uh, received the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star for courage and valor for remaining on the battlefield. The unit he was with, the 7th Army, was known as the Liberators. They liberated the largest uh, um, Nazi prison camp in Europe, over 100,000 prisoners. He was there when that happened. Well, it turned out that when he was in the military, he kept a journal with him the entire time. Now the soldiers weren't supposed to do this because uh, if you wrote things down, the concern was if you were captured, there would be information in there. He also kept all of the letters that were written to him while he was in Europe. So he kept those with him during the war too. So we had his journal, the letters he'd received and all the letters he'd sent. What I was interested in doing was sharing that historical material not trying so much to reinterpret the story as a film documentarian might, but to bring the historical materials in some kind of ordered fashion to the web so that um, a viewer could go through them and experience that material in much the same way that Richard's family did and that Richard did during the war. And, and, and you know, it's not just Richard's letters and his mother's letters, it's letters from his father, his, his sisters, his pals in the service, right? He's got all of these sources. They're all, they, they all converse, you know, in letters, which means they took the time to sit down and write and, and communicate at that pace, that reflective pace of writing. But you know, a hundred years from now, where are we gonna find those personal reflections of history? Where are historians gonna go? That, that was one reason why I decided to stay very close to the text. In the, in the presentation was so people could experience the words and how the words were put together, not just by the writers of the letters, but you know, a company clerk had to write up all of those morning reports, right? Um, newspaper uh, reporters had to write the articles that were in newspapers, right? Officers had to write the commendations for soldiers. War is always tragic. War is never heroic. Uh, war is always something uh, to resist and to and to uh, work uh, to resolve, uh, or you end up doing what Richard did with dying men in your arms and nothing you can do for them. So Richard went in as a pre-med student. He came out and he'd had enough of death and dying. And um, much later in his life, he would say, you have to take care of the living. 